This is a Flutter games tutorial, how to, where you're going to learn how to put effects onto sprite components. The girl is a sprite component and she is rotating as well as scaling in this demonstration. There is also a text box component in the lower left hand corner of the screen as well as background audio music. To follow the tutorial, you will need to get some assets. So I'm going to explain to you how you can download your own assets in preparation to follow the tutorial. You will need four assets, a character and two icons, one to mute the music and another one to start the actual rotation. It, it would be the intro to a game and then you need background music. The specific character I'm using for this demonstration is from Kyle Murray. So you can go to this site here. It was the uh, URLs on the previous slide. And then select a character that you want. You can use any other character. This is just kind of if you don't know where to turn to to get a character, uh, this will be in the same size as the one that I'm using, which would be in a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. I'm using the free icons from Flat Icon. So if you search on Google or go to the URL in the previous slide, you can and type free mute icon and then free start icon. You can find the type of icon that you want. Also, if you don't intend to distribute your game and you're just you know doing it for your own uh, entertainment, you can probably um, just grab any type of graphic You'll also need some type of audio track. I'm using a licensed audio track that I got from Humble Bundle. I paid for it, but there's a lot of great tracks out there that are royalty free. So on this site, Pixabay, this is quite nice. So pause the video and create a new Flutter project using the command flutter create, then add the packages flame audio, delete the sample code except for the run app method, and then add a new flame game class. Do not use any stateless widgets or stateful widgets, so delete those. You want to extend a flame game. Put the appropriate assets into assets slash audio, the specific folder name, and assets slash images. Adjust your pubspec.yaml file appropriately. Test the game in an Android emulator. It should be a black screen. I'll go through this step by step, but give it a try yourself. From a directory where you want to store your new Flutter project, Use Flutter Create, and it's the name of the project. You can't have hyphens, so just use an underscore if it's more than one word. I'm going to call mine spin underscore tutorial. Press enter, and this will create a new a starter template for us. So let's change into that new directory. I called mine spin underscore tutorial. Then I'm going to use Flutter pub add and then the name of the package that we want to add. In this case, it's flame underscore audio, which will also import flame. Then let's start up an editor. I'm going to use VS Code with Dart and Flutter extensions already applied to it. So in the left-hand panel, I'm going to select that folder icon with a plus sign to create a new assets folder. This would be in the main project, right? So if you, if you had another folder already selected, this wouldn't work. So I'm going to create an audio and images folder inside of assets. If these folders are nested, your game ultimately will likely not work unless you adjust it. So just make sure that it's in line visually and then grab the assets that you downloaded in the previous step. So I'm going to put the uh, the images, the, the mute icon, the start icon, and the girl in images, and then the audio file will be in audio. In VS Code, you can drag and drop the image file into that 
file bar on the left hand side and view it within VS Code. Just to make sure that the, you transfer the right file in. Once you have all your assets in the proper folders, you have to edit the pubspec.yaml file, which is in the root of your project. If you don't edit the pubspec.yaml file, you'll get an error message when you try to load the assets that it can't find the asset. If you add a new asset in after you edit this, you're going to also then need to run a flutter pub get. So right now, we already have the assets in here and VS Code will also automatically run flutter pub get for us when we save it. So it's assets slash images. Make sure there's a slash at the end of it. Then let's go back to main.dart and delete the example code except for the run app portion of it. Run app is from Flutter and normally you pass it an instantiated version of a stateful or stateless widget or a material app. But in this case, we're going to pass it a game widget which does accept uh, a widget from Flame which is Flame Game. So you have to extend it. When you extend the Flame Game class, which is from Flame, you'll inherit all the properties and methods from the parent or super class. In line eight, you defined a new class that you're calling My Spin Game. And we're gonna instantiate that within the game widget, the property game and we're going to pass it my spin game and instantiate it. Once you have it set up, let's run the your, your game and let's see whether you come up with a completely black screen. Congratulations. I'm using a Pixel 4 emulator here and there's some navigational icons at the bottom which are specific to the phone. And also there's some other icons at the top. So I want to get rid of that. I feel that my game aesthetics would be better if I don't have that top and port bottom portion. So I'm going to first make sure that the Flutter bindings have been initialized. This is just the glue between the Flutter framework and the Flutter engine. You can just treat that as like, um, like a phrase that you need to maybe refer to. But after it's initialized, then this is a this is the new thing. It's from Flame, which is flame.device.fullscreen. This will then get rid of the top and bottom portions, assuming you have a recent version of Flutter. To get the flame.device, you're gonna have to import Flame. Also note that we're using async and awake, await for async IO. So the await will have it wait for the uh, the device dot full screen to complete before it moves on to the next command. Pause the video on this screen for the next challenge. You can use the Flame online documentation to complete the challenge. Use the character file, the graphics file is a PNG or JPEG most likely that you used in the previous step and then get it on the screen, put it roughly in the center at about 100 pixels by 100 pixels in size. If you're stuck, there are some additional hints on the next slide. You can also use the Flame documentation on their site or one of my previous videos or any other tutorial to complete the challenge. Within the Flame game class uh, that you, you extended it, so it might be called like My Flame Game, uh, you need to put it on load and in there you load the sprite and then you can add it as well. Okay, pause the video and give it a try yourself. In my assets images folder, my character is called woman.png. She is a postal worker delivering mail for the benefit of the community. We're gonna declare a variable for woman and it's gonna be of type sprite component. We'll need to use the keyword from Dart late in order to declare a variable without um, specifying or initializing it. So it's initially going to be null, but we're going to initialize this thing 
inside of the onload method. So it'll work. Well, the sprite component is part of the flame slash components dot dart group. You may need to import it manually. So, so the onload is a future. We're going to load the the image, the PNG file from disk. So it's future void on load and then async because it's uh, we want to await or wait for the image to finish loading. So we just declared the variable woman. We didn't uh, initialize it. And so we're going to instantiate the sprite component and then we're going to use a cascade operator. So those two dots is just, it's a shortcut. So instead of doing woman dot sprite, we can just do dot dot and then chain these properties together. So the first one is sprite equals await load sprite. Then the size, which is a vector two, it's just the uh, X and Y, the width and height. There's a vector two dot all, so we can just pass it one number instead of two, just as, as another shortcut. The position is also vector two. So we're going to put her roughly in the center of the screen. We can get the center of the screen with the size uh, property of flame game. So in your class, my spin game, there is this size, which is the size of the screen on the mobile phone or the desktop. So the, the first parameter uh, property is size zero, which would be the width. We're going to divide that by two to get the center point of the width. And then size one slash two, or divided by two for the center point of the height. And we'll put the sprite there. The anchor point of a sprite component is generally the upper left-hand corner. But you can change the anchor point. Of, uh, so when we rotate it or we... Set the set the position like this. Like at what what's the reference point? So we want to make that the center of the sprite component, and then we just need to add it in. When I try to add it in, I'm going to run into a problem because on line 21, I didn't put woman dot png. So I just tried to run it, and I have an error here. And the error message in this case is pretty useful, right? So. Um, it can't find the file. And the reason it can't find the file is because I didn't put the full file name here, which is woman.png. Another warning here is on line uh, 17, I should probably put the override decorator above on load. Okay, so right now it's working. We can adjust the Y axis uh, more when we, we, we uh, apply the spin effect and the scale effect and see how she looks at that point. But for now, I'll just leave her like this. So we can jump to the last challenge of our video. I'll first explain the challenge to you. At the end of my explanation, pause the video and give it a try yourself. The challenge is to rotate and scale the sprite. The sprite is the, in my case, it's a woman postal worker. And we're going to rotate her. The way to rotate it is to create an update method. It's built into flame game, so you're going to have to override it um, using update double DT. It doesn't return anything, so it's going to be return void. You can look at other flame examples or the documentation to complete the challenge. Then inside of the update method, scale the height and the width of the character by adding one. Use an if statement to only update the width and the height if the character is below a certain height. That height is 40 pixels less than the entire height of the screen, which you can grab with size 1. Change the angle of the character. So there's a property dot angle. You can do the same thing. Just add a number to the rotation. The number is in radians, so it's two times the value of pi would be 360 degrees. Stop the rotation when it's 1.5 times the value of pi. You can also get the value of pi 
from the Dart math package, which you would need to import in order to use pi, uh, the constant, or you can use 3.14. Okay, now it's time to pause the video, press that pause button, and give it a try yourself. Refer to other documentation or other examples and see whether you can complete it. So this next step is optional, but I'm gonna import the Dart math package. And the syntax is Dart colon math. You don't have to put the package here. I'm also gonna use this as keyword to specify that when I use the constants from the Dart math package, I'm gonna to have to prepend the word math to it. So for example, if I wanna use the pi constant within uh, the Dart math package, I'm gonna to have to do math.pi and not just pi. Uh, this actually makes it simpler for me to work with the different constants without getting confused. The movement is gonna take place within the update method, which is built into the flame game. So update is a method from the flame game because it's already existing in the flame game and we will modify it. We're using the decorator override above the update method word so that we the uh, compiler knows that it's overriding the existing uh, update. Because we have the uh, instance variable woman above the onload method, we can now access her from any of the methods within the class. So one of the properties of woman, because it's a sprite component, is dot angle. And if the angle is less than two, um, minus 0.5, then uh, the angle will stop. Oh, and there, there she's going. She's uh, rotating right now. It's uh, better if we have a larger value than 0 0.01 and multiply it times dt, but I'm just putting 0 0.01 there for now so that we can get it going. Also in this update method, we want to increase the height and width of the woman. Uh, so, you know, to make it so that she's maybe closer to full screen here, um, make it more like she's growing. So we're going to check to see if the woman's height is a certain, is less than a certain size. Uh, so size one, which is the y axis, minus 40, uh, it's just so that she doesn't take up the entire, uh, entire screen and she'll be cut off, right, because she's at an angle. Then we're going to increase her height by one pixel every time through the loop. And again, for simplicity, I'm not multiplying it by dt, but probably when you roll out your game, you should, it's a, it's better practice to multiply it by dt, so it'd be like 30 times dt. And it's working. Uh, so she now is rotating and growing at the same time. You can adjust her starting position, the end position, also the rate of the rotation and the scale to suit your taste. By altering her starting position on the X or Y coordinate, you can alter her final position here. So you might want to cut off part of the, the head for the effect, or you may want to move her up or down. Personally, I like it to be a little bit bigger than the actual game screen, maybe not this big, um, or to ever exceed past the boundaries to create the illusion that there's more going on than just what's going on on the phone. It's a matter of personal preference and what type of effect that you want to create because it's your game. In the next video, we'll add some background music and other effects. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.